And then you stand. You didn't even say leave me alone. A week or two later, in my story I did. And a week or two later, you said the same thing. In your story. You said the same thing. On to the... Guys, this is Jalen. Um, he's an amazing man of God. And um, my name is Anyways, I have posed a question on my Instagram um, story, which if you're not following me on, on Instagram, you guys saw it at the beginning of this intro. Go ahead and follow me. And if you would like to follow Bay, I don't know if I really want y'all to follow Bay, so we're not even gonna worry about that. Um, anyways, I have some questions that we have to answer, and we're just gonna kick this off. My hat name is. <laughs> Listen. All right, I'm just playing. Go ahead. So the first question is, how did you guys meet, and what are our three areas, top three areas of opportunity as a couple? So she did six feet. <laughs> Go ahead. I gotta answer first. Yeah. We met because she was, uh, she wanted me, but she didn't know how to say it, so she fell off of my DMs talking crazy to my fine little man. I said, leave me alone, woman. All right, I didn't say that, but. Exactly. <laughs> but that's what happened. Um, that is true. Exactly. I definitely did reach out to him. Okay, so I did reach out to him, but I was reaching out to him because he had cute friends and we were cool. And I was like, hey, friend, put me on with one of your friends. And instead, he ended up saying this. And, um, but he followed up with, I'm not putting you on with nobody unless it's me. So, I it's mean, not the truth. It's not the truth. that is the truth. Why are you going to lie to the people not, like that? That's not what happened. What happened was, I said, nah, leave me alone. Second thing to clarify, I only talked to this man one time and asked him once, and it was on Snapchat. So, don't he boost in. Don't believe him. And then you stand. Uh, you didn't even say leave me alone. A week or two later, in my story I did, and a week or two later, you said the same in thing. Your story. You said the same thing. On to the second part of this question. And then you asked the third time. Okay. Now you boosted. You that's what happened. You take it too and then, far. And then that's what, hey, that's what happened. The top three areas of opportunity for us as a couple are. And we're going to answer these questions. We're going to ask honestly. <laughs> you haven't been honest. All right. Well, whatever. Okay. What are the top three areas of opportunity for us as a couple? That's a deep question. You go first, and then I'll tackle one, and then you tackle one. I went first the first time. Okay, well, I think um, our top three areas of opportunity as a couple, I definitely would, I'm, I'm gonna go from the spiritual side to answer this question. Okay. Um, <laughs> I didn't say anything. Come in the frame. I'm in the frame. You can see me. Okay. Um, I think on a spiritual standpoint, we definitely, um, I saw that as like a huge opportunity for us as a couple because we both love God and just like his relationship with God and ours. Like I learned, I don't know if he knows it, but I do learn a lot from him and watching his relationship with God. And so seeing us be able to grow, have the same foundation, which is like super key and important, at least for both of us. Um, in our relationship, having like a solid foundation, being able to build on it together spiritually is like super duper important. And I think it's a huge area of opportunity for us. That was one. That was one, yeah. You got two more. Babe! <laughs> what? You answer one. Come on. What the, what's the question? The top three areas of opportunity for us as a couple. I just get one top area. I think, I think, um, I think my opportunity we have is, you know, sometimes 
Rachel will get up in the morning and she just start talking. Yo, you showing out and I got, for the people on YouTube. It sends me straight into prayer. <laughs> because I... All right, all right, all right, don't worry about it. Um, um, keys of opportunity, uh, what, what, what? Areas of opportunity, babe, areas. All right, um, areas of opportunity is, um, It's not really for us though. I mean, I guess for me, it's just I gotta work on be, not being stubborn. Yeah, that's a us thing because I'm stubborn too. So um, I think, yes, there are flaws in every relationship, and that happens to be both of ours. And it can be very challenging at times because we both get you know, super stubborn, and then the petty comes out, and then it's like over with after that. So I think that is also another area. And I think, lastly, um, just being able to have and be with somebody that can help you to grow. I think that is always a huge area of opportunity in every relationship. And if you're with someone where they're not challenging you to think different or be different or be better, then of course, I'm not gonna tell you to break up and you know do whatever you gotta do, but you do essentially wanna be with someone who's able to challenge you and help you grow as a person. So the next question is, and I guess I can we could both answer. For what are you most grateful for today? My health. Come on, big dog. Stop going around left and right. Ain't got time. Listen, this quarantine, staying in the house, best thing that could have happened for both of us. Um, let's see. The next question are: What are some of your goals for 2020? And how are we staying motivated to accomplish them? It's personal, though. Okay, not don't share the personal goals. Share like the. What's the question? What's your goals for 2020? What are some of your goals for 2020, and how are you staying motivated to accomplish them? Oh, that's kind of deep. It's like a layered question. Um. Okay. So for the sake of not telling YouTube all of my business, well, it's not necessarily. That. It's just um, it's a layered question because I mean we were just talking about the culture shop, I mean, discipline and stuff. It's like kind of hard to. It's like that's not a quick question. I mean, I guess, I mean, I guess a goal could be, um, I want to be a better um, person. I want to be a better son. I want to be a better friend, better, you know. Boyfriend? Yeah. <laughs> How are you staying motivated to accomplish these things? Hey, grace of God. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for me, some of my goals, I'll always to be a better person. That's always at the top of the list. But I think if we're being realistic, just being consistent. It is very difficult for me, and I don't know why, um, but to be consistent with projects that I am working on that could potentially be great money-making opportunities, I tend to not be consistent with those things. And so one of my goals is to actually be consistent so that not only will I be proud of the product that I'm putting out, but also happy because your girl got some coins in her pockets. Um, YouTube being one of these things. So the way I stay motivated about getting them done is the fact that I know it yields some type of return. I'm not just doing this in vain. So hanging on to that. And I guess this one's for me. It says, what are you mostly wanting to gain from your YouTube channel? And the thing that I am looking to gain from my YouTube channel is just, I don't know, I, I feel like community is important. I feel like being able to relate to somebody outside of your home or outside of your friendship group, like that is literally what YouTube is for a lot of us or just, you know, being an outlet for where someone can come to and relate to my life or what I have going on, stuff that I've been through. Um, so I think what the most thing that I'm trying to get out of this the most is number one, having fun because I do enjoy this, but number two, establishing some type of community where we're all like on the same page. We all relate to one another. Um, and essentially we all communicate with each other down in the comments, on Instagram, whatever the case may be. Um, so that's what I'm mostly looking to gain. So what you need to do right now is smash the like button and comment what's one of your goals and what you want out of this YouTube channel. Tell us, give us some ideas. She don't know what she's doing out here. That's why I need to see Anyways, like he said, go ahead and drop something in the comments below about what you're working on, what you motivated on for this year. And lastly, this is for both of us because we both have a nonprofit. Lastly. Lastly. Got more questions. What's the last question? 
it's quick. Question Most of them are like comments on asking how I feel about their pages, and I don't, I don't, we don't have time. Feel about their pages. Feel about like some of their workout pages, and we don't have time for that. Um. Last question: How is running your own nonprofit? Any tips? We both have nonprofits, so both of us can answer this. Do you want to go first? It's hard. It's tired. I'm tired, boss. It's a lot. Okay. Especially when you're by yourself. You gotta do everything. You gotta plan everything. You got <clears throat> especially when you got everything else going on. You got a full time job. You got, you got church ministry. You got relationships, you got life. She running up my neck, talking about she wanna go here, go there, calling my phone left and right. <laughs> I got all types of stuff going on. Okay. I'm just playing. But it it really is hard though. I mean, I mean you know, it's just a lot going on. You have to literally you know, kind of stay motivated and be disciplined. Really, um, playing, it's a lot. Yeah, um, for me, I kind of agree with that. I, it does take a lot of discipline. So I actually, um, and you have to be okay hearing no as well in terms of wanting to get funding, wanting to even host your program or whatever your nonprofit is anywhere. You have to be okay with hearing no and understanding that a yes is eventually going to come down the line. And you got to keep the faith. I think for me, discipline was a challenge and also um, understanding that you can do it. Because um, for the longest, I sat on my idea of a nonprofit for a while just because I was very intimidated by it and not understanding that God plays a role in it and that, you know, he's going to come through for the girl pretty much. And so once I realized like he he's the one who gave me this idea, who gave me the passion to do this, I know whatever I need help on, he's going to come through for me on it. And so that was my biggest thing that I had to get over. So I say for tips, if you have that on your heart and on your mind to start, start it because I'm, I guarantee you it is definitely needed out here. It's a lot of things out here in the world that are a lot of whys, a lot of questions, a lot of problems, and your nonprofit could be the answer to those things. So don't you know, hold back on it, go ahead and start it and know that it's a learning process. It takes a lot of time. It does take a lot of planning. Matter of fact, this year we actually had some things trying to get worked up and planned, but coronavirus. Don't say it like that. Either. Coronavirus had other plans, but you know, it's going to be all right. Cause as soon as this goes away, ideas are rolling back up and you know, Understand why you're doing your nonprofit as well. You know, don't be starting to do nothing because everybody else out here doing anything because there'll be no passion in it. So make sure your nonprofit answers a problem in the society, in the community, whatever you're doing it for, and know that you know you have to have a team. And as long as you have a team, you know, as long as you got a good back end behind you, you're really straight and you're really good. Um, so yeah, the paperwork part is like the easy part. It's about actually getting out there and doing things and networking and meeting people to say yes to some of your ideas. And also research, do your research. Um, there are thousands of grants out there. If you're a black female, there are a thousand black female nonprofit owner grants out there. Um, anything dealing with youth and educational service and even single mothers, there are a thousand grants out there. So definitely do your research, start applying for funding. If you are looking to start your nonprofit and figure out how to get funding for it. Um, but definitely have you a team because you are going to need, at least in the state of Georgia, they require you to have your nonprofit, like your members um, already when you go to file because you have to list them by name and by address. Um, and also the process, I think in terms of cost from, what I, from everything I've paid from what I can remember, it was probably about 300 bucks for all your paperwork and that's like a one the your 501c3 you file one time but every year after that in the state of georgia you have to keep refiling your business which is like 25 bucks every year but essentially to get everything up and running off of the ground it only ran me about 300 bucks and what's 300 dollars to how many lives you're going to be touching and saving for the rest of your life um and people are going to love you for it so that's all I have, um, but my nonprofit um, catered towards young girls who are um, coming from troubled environments, um, no specific race or ethnicity, but just age ranges. I start from at least fourth and fifth grade all the way up until high school. Um, and eventually my goal is to be able to provide college scholarship funding for the seniors who are actually gonna go through the program. But you know, 
I believe God's gonna make a way to provide me that money to be able to do that for them. But even in the process, I could start now um, and you know start helping girls up along the way to just teach them the right way to go, teach them how to be leaders, how to be empowered women, how to bounce back from whatever situation they're in to help them to understand like, hey, it's okay if this is the environment that you come from, but you don't have to subject yourself to that. You can be better than wherever you're coming from or better than whatever state of mind that you're in. And so essentially, I do young women's and children empowerment, young girls. You could tell them what you do. Mothers. The girls' mothers. That's really all right. I <laughs> No, I mean, basically the same thing she does, but just with mothers, single moms. Yeah, I mean, single moms out here, they're really super here. I mean, for real. Um, but yeah, and I think to... Understanding where your passion and drive come from, and I, I feel like a lot of nonprofits are, they come from your own life and your own type of testimony situation. If you are of the faith, and if you are of the faith, it's okay. Um, but they come from some type of maybe you've been through something or you resonate with something very strongly. Um, I know for me that my nonprofit came from how I felt growing up. Um, and just understanding that I wanted someone there, not just like a ministry leader, not just like a teacher, um, but actually someone there who's young, who's living this life, walking it out, who's been through something. I can relate to them. They can relate to me. I can speak whatever language they understand back and forth. Um, and so that's how I feel like uh, most nonprofits are originated from something, uh, uh, some type of void or some type of... I don't know, can't find a better word, but some type of void that happened in your life. Um, most non I feel like most nonprofits are birthed out of those things that happen in your life or environments that you come from. So those were all the questions that we had today. Thank y'all so much for joining us. Listen, like, subscribe, smash the like button right now. Do it right now. <laughs> subscribe to her channel. All things Ray. All things Ray. You know what? Listen, I'm going to do the outro. Subscribe, like right now. And I love you. See you later.